Bye, Ruby. Bye. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
please write your wishes on a post-it and participate in our art installation. Roll up your post-it, stick it in, and your wishes will come true. What do you want to do? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> um, well, what do you have a wish? <gasps> oh, guys, subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Do it, because I'll oh. cry. <laughs> Okay. And stick it somewhere good. Where do you want it? Right in the That's so cute. <laughs> what color so do I want? I want green. Let's do green. Oh my god, I claimed this one. I think it's so cute. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I do Twitch sometimes and TikTok. Hi, my name is Megan or Megan Plays. I mostly post on YouTube um, and stream on there sometimes. Uh, TikTok as well. I play Roblox mostly, but in my free time, I play a ton of other games. I'm Serena, also known as Ashley Unicorn. I play uh, Roblox, I make YouTube videos, and in my free time, I like to play Valorant and games like that. You tell me about the first game, video game, that you remember playing. Let's start with that. Um, I think the first video game I played was Wizard 101 and Toontown. Yeah. <laughs> I love Toontown. So I don't exactly remember, but there is footage of me two years old playing an Elmo game on my dad's PC, oh, 1997. Oh, um, and then the, my earliest recollections were like the Barbie Studio Maker games where you did little Barbie setups and you got to dress them up and they got to do little dances. Um, so pretty much the simplest stuff like that. For me, it was Super Mario on the 64. I grew up with that. It was my favorite. I love Minecraft. I love Minecraft Bed Wars. That's my favorite game, probably. But Fortnite has been so fun recently. I don't even know. The no builds, definitely. I've also been loving Roblox Bingo. Uh, I don't know. It's really great. You would think it's not, but it's super cool. So. For me, it's um, my Vice League of Legends. I've been playing that game for way too long now. And Valorant, and also recently, for the no build mode goes crazy. Like, I've been playing a lot of Fortnite recently. Love it. All right, yes. League of Legends, Overwatch, and Fortnite are my favorites right now. I can't <laughs> stop. For me, um, aside from Roblox, I've been playing a lot of Sims. I have like, like thousands and thousands of hours put into The Sims, so that's what I do in a lot of my free time. And I also played like Toontown for an entire week straight, like last week actually. Um, Toontown rewritten, they brought it back. Such a good time. 
Um, I just played a lot of Roblox, and then I've been playing a lot of Valorant as well, and like Phasmophobia, which is like a ghost hunting game, which is really fun. <laughs> For those of you who are focused on a specific platform like Minecraft or Roblox, what are your favorite experiences on those platforms? Um, I usually play Bloxburg, which is like a building yes. game, you can like build anything you want, um, it's really fun. Yeah, I have a ton of favorite experiences, um, Overlook Bay, Trader, I also really like Beast Storm Simulator, work at a pizza place, some of the classics, those are my favorite. For me, I love Arsenal, it's a competitive <laughs> shooter game, I love that, yes, bingo, that one is another one of my favorites. Yes, so no way! Yes, 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 it's so fun, Royal High and Bloxburg as well. So proud to be a woman gamer, and I also think it's important not to like put people in boxes. Also, you know, like we're just gamers. Like you know, makeup artists are makeup artists. We're gamers. Yeah, I never like, as Kat said, at first I wasn't like really subscribing to the label because as since I was playing games since I was two, I never really thought about it like that. Um, but then I was like working at GameStop and experienced a lot of discriminatory behavior when I worked there. That was really awful. I could only hang in there for two weeks before I just. Had to get out of there. I'm so um, to hear that. Oh no, <laughs> it's fine. I really opened your eyes to the type of people that are out there. I have so many crazy stories. Um, and anyway, as it kind of grew, I just kind of considered myself a gamer. But as I've fallen into the space where my audience is primarily nine to fourteen year old girls, um, I've really taken upon myself to be like, I am a woman in gaming, and you guys can do it too. And I really kind of grew into like feeling like it was a term of power, like Kat said. Like, now, it's like, yeah, I wear that badge with honor. Um, I agree. I don't really put a label on me either, just because I don't think, like, Roblox and that's like gaming, but it is. Um, so, yeah, it, it is gaming. <laughs> it's um, the biggest game true. in the world. Um, but yeah, I agree. What progress do you think still may need to be made? I think a lot of progress has been made already, um, especially in Roblox. I feel like there's not really a big, in my experience, I've never like felt like depowered or whatever. Um, but when I play Valorant, there's still like some stuff there because of rank and things like that. And like, there's a lot of ways to go from like FPS shooters. But I think in like casual gameplay, um, I think everyone's welcome and stuff like that. Like I was gonna say, being a part of the Roblox community has been really great because it is so split down the middle between male and female and these like, the young boys that are growing up playing, it's just normal for them to play alongside women, which is really fun. Um, so as I said before, I was doing Twitch and I work at GameStop and all this, I experienced so much sexism, like so much, um, ah, and um, ever since I left that community and joined Roblox, I had never heard one negative comment about being a woman at gaming again, so I think it's kind of hard for me to answer that question as somebody, like I don't play first person shooters because I get motion sickness and migraines and not fun things, so I like, I'm not in that experience. Yeah, that's fair, and I think there's some hope here, right, that like over the years as the percentage of women in gaming increases, and you've heard there's like many different tastes on this panel, everything from hardcore games to, you know, casual games, and I think the more women show up regardless, right, like there's going to be less maybe friction, right, like, and so show up. If you're a female gamer out there, show yes, up. Play yes. games. Yeah, I experience a lot of hate in co the competitive scene because I love competitive games, first person shooters. Even in League of Legends, the people there are so toxic and they just hate to see like a woman in the competitive gaming space. So yeah, just about normalizing that and keep going. Don't let these people scare you because they're just projecting because they suck. <laughs> like it. No, honestly, I feel like from what I've seen, I feel like there has definitely been more women entering the gaming space, but even years ago, there was already a lot of women in the gaming space. But I'm really happy to see like a lot of a lot more women are stepping forward. There's a lot more female content creators that we can look up to now. What are the top reasons that you focus on the community that you focus on? I just played Roblox because so I started playing Roblox at an early age, and I really like the community. It's very open. There's a lot of people. Um, also, the age is very varied. I feel like people think Roblox is very like for young kids, um, but it's it's a lot of people that are there. It's pretty cool. You're a big Bloxburg fan, yes. And as of yesterday, I had the I attended your panel, so I have a little secret info that you used to aspire to be. Uh, was it? Uh, it was an interior, interior design designer? and architecture. Yeah. Which I think is so cool. So you gravitated towards Bloxburg because it gave you the ability to like do that in a virtual environment to create things and to design. 
So I kind of hopped around a few communities. I was kind of finding my place. My very first game on my channel was Diablo, because um, I'm actually a really big Blizzard fan. Uh, so I kind of hopped around. I did The Sims, and I kind of ultimately landed on Roblox and felt like home there because I felt like I was able to make an impact in more lives than I was. I kind of saw myself like getting comments saying how much I was helping other people, um, and that's kind of why I decided to stick to the community. Also, the fact it was so welcoming, like it was such a high stark contrast between what I was experiencing with the mean comments about being a woman, and then it's like that all kind of just went away, and I was just really supportive and nice and kind. So I kind of just stuck there. It felt like home. Yeah, I completely relate to that. I went through a bunch of different communities, and the most welcoming community was Roblox. I felt like I finally had somewhere I belonged because I always wanted that feeling of belonging and being accepted. And the Roblox community really did that for me, so it and, really stuck. And you went from GTA to Roblox. Yep. So do you want to talk about the contrast in that? Oh my gosh, that is... I used to get bullied in GTA 5. Like, they, I'd have people like hack my streams and like try to like just really mess with me and I never experienced that in Roblox. Yeah, it was absolutely terrible. I would have to like stop streaming when I would stream GTA 5 because people would just bully me off the game. So, yeah. It, it was awful, but Roblox is amazing. I'm so grateful. I love it. I've got Team Roblox to my right. This was not by design, by the way. <laughs> it's cracking me up. I just realized it. How do you engage with your community? How, how have you built your community? Talk to them on Roblox. I let them join. And I also like use social media. I like to talk to them on Twitter when I'm online. Let them join with me. Um, yeah, I just I just talk to them like on Roblox. Let them have fun with me. Play some video games. You use like chat to chat with them. Or? Yeah, I use chat like on the game, and then also like on Discord. I use Discord to talk to them and things like that. Yeah. Um, also the same. You know, you have your joins on for followers, or your joins on for everyone. They come in. They can play with you. They can trade with you stuff like that. Um, I have servers that I bought, because in Roblox you can buy private servers. Like I have servers that I've bought and like sent out links to for people who might not be able to like buy their own server so they can play in private if they want. For example, on Royal High you can do like diamond farming and you can collect money that way. So I have a public server open for anyone who wants to privately collect diamonds. I mean, I have to point out your puff balls too, because you give your fans another way to engage with you, which is by these amazing puff yeah. balls. I need to get them stay 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 Pick them up. They're there if you want some. I love connecting with my viewers by inviting them to join me in videos. So I like to get them as involved as possible. Like I'll have, I have a Roblox group, and I'll put like secret messages, be like, to come to Bloxburg, and like we'll build a plot. And they really love to be involved in that, and I feel really close and connected with them that way. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. Warm round of applause for our panelists. <laughs> Okay, this, this cookie powder. Yeah. Okay. Now you're crushing. 
watching it. You're doing great. She's going to be a star woman. What is that? Okay? Uh, it's the best pancake of all the time. The pancake that? that's going to smoke you. We've got right? cookies and cream yeah, pancakes over there. Okay, now we're going to clean this up. I regret that. I regret that. Okay. Um, and some walnut cinnamon pancakes, too. Okay. So some crumbles of boba chew. Boba chew? Yeah. Brown sugar cookie butter boba pancakes. You've been too delicate. You've got to really match it. Oh, yeah. Would you guys eat? There it is. Do you guys think it's a little risky to be with no butter in the pan? What do you think? Risky? No. You're not risky? I didn't see the butter. I did not see the butter, to be clear. Do you guys think it's a little risky to be with no butter in the pan? What do you think? Risky? No. You're not risky? All right. Alex has got some pancake butter going in. There's some pickles on there that are just going to come right out. It's cookie batter. Scrambled pancake? Ew. Ooh. Uh, you know? Hold on. No. Like when your omelet like turns into scrambled eggs. A scrambled pancake? Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a German dish called Pfeffer Pankaken. <laughs> no. Do you think we should do it? Whoa. Um, if 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 moving in this route might help us against these beautiful pancakes up here, yes. I'm all for taking any risks at this. Do point. it, scramble up that pancake. Think... 80 seconds. Count down. Everyone count down. I want to see this what happens. Saltiness, so it kind of cuts it in a way. We have got oh, 
<laughs> well, this is our beautiful son, and we named him Kyle. And like any child, he is incredibly disappointing to us for uh, various reasons. But also, also, we love him very much, and we stand by his side, and I'm very proud of what we've created today. It is an Oreo churro pancake, started very large. Churro. Michelle yeah. trimmed it down to very small for yeah. presentation. Oh, we also made little, it extra tough. I have to say, it's a little flat, uh, flatter than the other ones, which is not really what you want out of a pancake, mm. but that's okay. Okay, good. Shut <laughs> it I have a I'll great solid cookies and cream flavor, which I love, but um, it's a little bit on the dry side, unfortunately. Um, I think maybe putting the whipped cream on top would have helped that instead of the Oreo cookie. No. <laughs> no, come on. I got to it. You know what? I'm good. But you should try that one. I try and take notes. I want to hear from you before I make my decision because it shouldn't just be up to me, right? Yeah, yeah. It should be up to all of you who never tried the pancake. <laughs> yeah. All right, we've got cookies and cream. Yeah. Yeah. Next we have the cookie butter. Yeah. And our blueberry bliss. Cookie butter. Larger than life in flavor, I have to say. Not in size. What do we win? Yeah. You win. Bragging rights. Go for it. Go for it and tell everyone that you won the funny food pancake contest.
and I was gonna have two. There you go. <laughs> See you on the other side. See you. <laughs> wow, you are literally hidden. Like, I, I can am. barely see you. Yeah. Come on in. Whoa, it's whoa. nice in here. Whoa. <laughs> what does it look like? Ooh. Wait, it's over here. Look. Oh, that's so cute, that is. Cute. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're cute. I'm getting hit. And then here we're doing a scavenger hunt. So we have eight blocks hidden around the cabin. Different letters on them that spot the word snicker. You guys are gonna basically look around the cabin. So you have a minute and 30 seconds to find them all. Three, two, one, go. So we have one that says, we the monsters high. So maybe you wanna do the up today yes, I think it's like it maybe three o'clock or something but there's not as much as we thought there would be to do mm -hmm. um, but we still met some people and saw yeah. some things and we still saw all the did good some stuff. things yeah so it was still really nice my expectations yeah mine too I thought it'd be a lot smaller this year just because of COVID and everything but it turned out pretty nice and hey maybe next year will be even bigger because everyone's still trying to get comfortable being in person again Fingers are strong. thank you all so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this if you have not subscribed make sure you do and i will see you guys in my next video bye, bye. i'm back hello i missed you